Hello, all you hardcores out there, how are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. Biggest gob in sport. There we go. Uh, finish off today. Uh, right up to Christmas medlars. Some band, you know, no hand wraps. Uh, right. Anthony Joshua versus Gary Cornish. Repeat or revenge? Well, this rate is going to be like, it's going to be like, isn't it? Come on. Uh, Gary Cornish is 36, isn't he? You know, he's about five years younger, four or five years younger than Tony Bellew. He's 25 and two, Gary Cornish. Former Commonwealth champion. All right, 13 by way off. He fought Anthony Joshua eight years when he got stopped, yeah? Why can't we have repeat or revenge? I mean, it's obvious Joshua's scared to death of his own shadow, isn't he? So why don't we get him somebody that he can build his confidence up on? Because so far, they're putting obstacles and obstacles in front of Dylan White fight. Let's hope that fight happens, but I'm seeing a lot of obstacles and I'm seeing... Four week till fight week and no press conference. Is that enough time to sell this? British public, are they going to buy into this? I don't think they are. Not after Ben Eubank. With all the stop starting and uncertainty in the sport of boxing, why would people purchase tickets for a show that might not happen? Because if they do that and they're from out of town, you've got to pay for hotels, travel, take time off work. People are not prepared to do that. But who can Anthony Joshua fight? Well, I know for a fact that he can fight Lewis Ortiz. You know, he can fight Wallin and push Fury to edge and really should have had the win, shouldn't he, really? He could fight Ergovic. That's an in-house fight. They could give Johnny Fisher uh, a run-out gun there like they did Dave Allen against Ortiz. Why not Johnny Fisher against Joshua? I mean, let's be honest, he could end up icing him. Old Elmer Fudd, a.k.a. Johnny Fisher, he could end up icing him, couldn't he? Oh, Johnny, oh, you sword, kicking duck, special fly wise. Listen, who's Joshua going to fight? Like I said, frightened to death. He's got, like, dart You know, when Eric Bristow were throwing darts like that, he used to go like that, didn't he? And all of a sudden, he got dart items. And uh, Joshua's got that on here, like Vladimir had against Tyson Fury. Basically, it's you're frightened that something's coming back. That's the bottom line. You want to hit somebody, but you don't want to get hit back because it's called hit and not get hit. Now, I think Joshua could build his confidence up against Gary Cornish, the pride of Scotland, repeat or revenge in a rematch. Well, why not? They've just about done everything else and thrown everybody's name in mix. So why don't they just give Joshua a fight with White Rhino? At least he's active. Four fights in four years. Fuck, fuck, man. I don't know. But at this rate, it's not going to be Joshua against Bacoli or Ergovic or Ortiz or Wallin, is it? It's not going to be one of them guys, is it? You know, a top 15 guy. You know, it's... It's going to be a knockover, isn't it, really? Contracts don't mean rubbish, do they? Dylan White, we're not about this, that. Contract this, contract that. Look, Dillian, you know what your fear is? If you've got to have a contract like that, right? If you've got to have a contract like that, Dillian, you're going to get paid, aren't you? You know what you're getting paid? If you've got to fight him a couple of times, and then maybe somebody else if you beat him twice, so be it. Just get in the ring. At least you know you've got guaranteed fights if you're winning. Oh, oh. Cornish is five years out at the ring, but so is Tony Bellew. But it's all right for Eddie Hearn to put Tony Bellew in a fight after five years out in a world title fight. So we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. I mean, they could go back to where it all started, couldn't they, eh? 
We could go back to where it all says 126 and three or something, and 125 and two. Whatever. But Gary Cornish is going to turn up in it. Plus, we could sell it to Eddie as an England versus Scotland. You know, the Saxon English against the sweaty socks. We could do that, couldn't we? Hey, we could sell it as that. Well, why not? We love a good England Scotland game, don't we? We all remember what they did in 1977, didn't they? Came to Wembley and wrecked it. You know what I mean? Did the pinch of 1 0 win that year with Kenny Dagleish? I'm not sure. Pop, pop, bang. But look, he's got to fight somebody with a heartbeat. Still and White, why would you need options on somebody like Dylan White? Why would you need options on him? And why is Dylan White always stalling on things about contracts? Just getting in a fight. That's all we want to see. That's all, dear God. Dear God, why are we involved with the sport of boxing? Why? Why? Why did they chose this? And I could be fat, fat like them next door. Can I pop up back? Yeah, but it's not as exciting as this, is it, that? <laughs> I don't know, but sooner or later, there's got to be... Something's got to happen after all this. And there's got to be a knock-on effect where people say, do you know what? This ain't right. And it ain't, is it? It's just waffle, isn't it? For the sake of waffle. You know, August 12th, what we're on now. 4th of July. August 12th, and there's no press conference to say that there's a Joshua White. And if he loses against Joshua, he's history. But if Joshua loses, they've got to fight again. So then that'll be six months from now. He takes it to January 2024. And if Anthony Joshua beats Dylan White then, Dylan White's going to scream, oh, no, I want a, I want another one. And it goes on and on and on. And what if somebody gets cut or injured or a rotator cuff or knuckle injury? What? You don't have to make weight heavyweights, but all other stuff can come into play, can't it? Then what? It's no one saying, yeah, we're, we're going to fight that line and, 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 you know, April 2024, I'm hearing now. It's getting further away than ever. It's lie after lie after lie. It's a bit like the Conor Ben situation, isn't it, really? You know, what, we have five stories now, four or five? You know, you've got Bellew coming in and out and... Uh, Backing him, the guard, and all these other people, and all that. And look, strict liability, it's in his system. You're responsible for it in your system. So I don't think that fight's going to happen in Saudi between Eubank and Ben. I think it'll be B for Eubank in UK. That's what I think. I think Conor Ben will get hammered when they get dealt with. I think they'll get hammered. They've had that much PR, they've shown that much arrogance. I don't think any court in the land could let Conor Ben. Walk free if they did. Could you imagine what had happened in the sport of boxing? People are not testing the waters with other license holders. No. If Robert Smith, right, can conduct a survey and send everybody who's a license holder from bellmen, cutmen, seconds, chief corner, uh, managers, promoters, fighters, if Robert Smith can send everybody an email and say, what do you think about the situation? Should Conor Ben be allowed to fight or, or not? Or should we give Conor Ben no ban? Or Conor Ben's saying that his body can't get rid of eggs or this and that and, and it can't digest it as quick. Or I don't know what's gone on, but can't Robert Smith just test the waters with everybody and say, what will happen if we, we let Ben off? I'll tell you what will happen, Robert Smith. People are on their licences back in because they'll think, why am I going to put my fighter or my son? Because a lot of fathers in boxing. Why are we going to put our fighters from our gym or my family members or my son in a boxing ring when there's a chance that somebody could kill them and have performance enhancing drugs in them? And you people are not going to do anything about it. If they go and speak to all trainers in the sport, right? Except Tony Sims, of course. Go and speak to every other trainer in the sport. 
and ask them what they think and test the water because they're, they're all saying to me, but not on here. And this is why it cheeses me off. A lot of them need to come out and say, Do you know what? See, right. They need to go test the water. I think there'll be people handing the licenses in. Or it could be a free for all the people who are just going to take what they want to take. And what they're going to do, they're going to push the sport on the ground. This next 12 months is going to be the most important period in our sports history. We might call them years. It is. And for one man, Conor Ben, and his promoter wanted to put the fight on, sweep it all the way and bury the drug test. Two drug tests, four adverse findings. A and a B, A and a B. That's four. We still don't, we haven't got clarity on the Dylan White situation, have we? That we're all shrouded in mystery. Isn't that four year today or something now? Or four year this week? Something like that? Four year. Have you seen any clarity on that? It all seemed to go away, didn't it? But this one has it. So that's all I want to notice. It's utter. No batteries for it now. I'm going to be unbearable with it. Oh, pop, pop, bang. All right, everybody have a great day. I suppose we're going to do the last day. Do you know what? Sometimes when you've had a little bit of something in your tummy, you don't feel that pain in the euro so much. So hopefully next hour it'll I'll be all right. Got to do something today. All right. Everybody have a great Tuesday. Uh sparkling, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Sparkling. I'll see you tomorrow. You're bringing your mate. Well, you don't need to. Just come on your own. All right? Peace out.